the Las Vegas Raiders. What do they have to do to dethrone the Kansas City Chiefs inside the AFC West division? I tell you what, looking in hindsight at each team inside this division, the moves that they have made, yeah. They have all gotten significantly better. And you can make the argument, you know, Kansas City's made some moves here, but they've gotten a little worse in a sense where everybody else has gotten better. Now, mm -hmm. it's still, even that, even Kansas City's worse, and them getting worse is still better than a majority of the entire NFL there. It just tightened the gap a little bit. That's Absolutely. It. And so I know there's some Chiefs fans that may think that's like saying, hey, the Chiefs got worse. Like, no, the Chiefs are still damn good, and they should be considered a legitimate threat no matter what because of the fact they Without do question. have Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, and they have a multitude of different offensive weapons now. However, yep. every other team in the AFC West has done that, and I'd say probably one of the best wide receiving cores of the entire AFC West, it's going to go here to the Las Vegas Raiders. They have an explosive offense right now as it appears on paper. Think about this. Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Brian Edwards, Josh Jacobs, obviously a dynamic tailback, and then even Derek Carr, too. I know that they're working on the extension side of things for him, but it's like, yep. hey, that offense right there, the addition of Devontae Adams with those guys makes them one of the most dangerous teams right now in the National Football League and a prime favorite to potentially dethrone Kansas City inside the AFC West. Your thoughts on this, and then we'll get to some of the X factors here as to maybe how the Raiders can do just that. I think one of the big things for me when you look at the the Las Vegas Raiders on offense is they have someone who can kind of fit every single mold on what they want to do offensively. You have Devonta Adams who can work both in the slot or also on the perimeter. You've got Hunter Renfro who is just a route running technician picking up the first down. Doesn't do a lot after the catch, but because of how sure, uh, sure hands he is, he's going to be the, one of the top targets on this team no matter what. While still Devonta Adams will be the number one. Renfro is going to be the guy you get picking up those, uh, those extra yards. On the perimeter also, you also have someone in Brian Edwards who kind of got a got off to a late start in his career, came into the NFL, injured out of South Carolina, kind of almost redshirted essentially his first year in the NFL, started to progress next year, and he also brings that big body presence around 6'3". So he's going to be a good guy on the outside too, but honestly, it's Darren Waller who is going to be the guy I think takes that next step in his trajectory, which is a very scary thought. You look last year, he played on, uh, he saw it's 23% of the target share, 26% of the air yards kind of as that main deeper target for a uh, for, uh, uh, Derek Carr, 29% of his routes came in the slot, but 22% came on the outside, uh, came out wide. Only uh, uh, Kyle Pitts, Mark Andrews, and Rob Gronkowski had a deeper A dot, and only Mark Andrews and Kyle Pitts had a higher share of the team air yards. So you're now bringing, pairing him up with Devontae Adams. That is ridiculous when you talk about the amount of talent that is on this team. Good luck in the red zone. I don't know how you stop this, whether it's Darren Waller matchup against a linebacker, Brian Edwards outside, Hunter Renfro burning a slot cornerback on the inside, or Devontae Adams just doing what Devontae Adams does. And if that doesn't work, oh, wait, we still have a solid offensive line, regardless of what happens with Alex Leatherwood when he's not causing a penalty, with Josh Jacobs. Like, you have everything yeah. locked up on this team. Then you bring in Chandler Jones. Oh, hey, we still have a pass rush here, too. Like, there's a couple question marks maybe on the, on the secondary side of things for the Raiders, but this is a team that got so much better they are the best like fourth seed in the division in the entire nfl like it's not fair yeah. like they would be a number two and most other ones they just happen to play in the most competitive division we've seen in quite some time like it's just a bad time to be in the afc west but their position to sit here and try to make a run in the playoffs a wild card spot is absolutely in the future of the las vegas raiders if they play well now they, this is a team that doesn't have a lot of margin for error compared to the other ones in this division the chargers the chiefs and the broncos i think have a little bit more room for error in how they play because i feel like they are not just a slight tier above but when you look at the raiders if they play how we think they can with josh mcdaniels and assuming Derek carr in this offense picks up a very complicated play but quickly and they come out the gates on fire the raiders are not a team anyone wants to play regardless of what their end division record is I think that's a fair point to make, too. And as you mentioned, too, the complication of Josh McDaniel's offense, too. And even, like, I think for Derek Carr, he'll be well-suited for it because he played in John Gruden's offense, which is one of the most complicated out there in terms of terminology. I mean, there is literally paragraph-long playbook calls in Gruden's offense. I don't know. Spider 2 I banana. That's it. Well, I mean, so it's only one play. Outside of that one. That's my favorite play in football, too, by the way. But, I mean, I think that's going to be a big question because you can make the argument that outside of Tom Brady – Derek Carr will be the most talented quarterback that Josh McDaniels will have had the privilege of working with in the yeah, NFL. 
now in a head coaching position, he's still going to be calling the offensive play. He's going to make it. He's going to make all the decisions. Then they have Patrick Graham as their defensive coordinator, a steal from the New York Giants, and how he comes there. And as you mentioned, you get Chandler Jones in free agency. You have Max Crosby. You have Divine Diablo coming down, playing a little bit more of that linebacker yep. position. Some questions about Jonathan Abram and his future, also the other safety position. And then at cornerback, what about Trayvon Mullen there? Are they going to add cornerback in this year's NFL draft outside of that? There's Nate Hobbs as well, who emerges one of those surprise slot players for the National Football League and for the Raiders last season. But a lot of questions here for this Las Vegas Raiders team. I will pinpoint this, though. For the Las Vegas Raiders, outside of one matchup, they have really struggled against the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is 7-1 and one in his career against the Raiders. And that one loss came at that arrowhead upset where Josh Jacobs and company took over in a big-time win. I believe it was 40-32. to 32. Now they've had some competitive games there. But then in 2021, there was the whole logo debacle at midfield. And the Chiefs just absolutely oh, spanked yeah. the Raiders after that. I think this is a different team, though, because obviously with Josh McDaniels coming in, I imagine we might see a little bit of the Patriot way being implemented and how they conduct business with this organization, which yeah. could be a good thing. I think it's a good Raiders thing. You can't have a more chaotic season than Las Vegas had last year. You've got to do something to change the narrative on that team. Yeah. And no, that was for, really? look, honestly, that was in spite of everything Rich Passaccia did, because honestly, yeah. I thought he could have gotten the head coaching job. That dude did an incredible job coaching last year and filling in for what was a very tumultuous situation that was led by John Gruden, the stuff that happened off the field. Rich Passaccia, hat tip to him for what he did last year. I thought, he honestly, he could have been the head coach of this team. And he's going to make the Green Bay Packers special teams unit that much better here in 2022. But if you're a Las Vegas Raiders fan, let us know what you thought about this video in the comment section down below. Hit that thumbs up button if you like it. Share your thoughts as well. We're always open for discussion here at Pro Football Network.